Life is hectic. Some days are just a blur. We're Jay and Laura LaFoon, and we help busy couples stay married for life. Welcome to the Married for Life Podcast. Well, we just got some new furniture, and we're super excited about it because we've had uh, old furniture, especially, okay, true confession. We've had our dining room suit since we got married, 34 years. It's solid oak. Someone so, didn't want to get rid of it because it's as old as our marriage. I didn't, didn't get rid of you, did I? But no, we we um you know the it doesn't close quite all the way, so it pinches people when they're the sitting. The chairs in a row. are breaking. The chairs are breaking. <laughs> um, so we we went and got some new furniture. But here's a tip. Um, we make, didn't just get dining room furniture. We also well, this is the tip though. Okay. First of all, always <clears throat> confirm your <laughs> delivery day. See, we thought our delivery day was going to be on a Friday, and um, we called the the place on Thursday just to confirm that it was going to be on Friday. We called the place at noon. At noon, and they said, "No, Mr. Lafoon, your your delivery is today, <laughs> and it's at twelve fifteen. And so basically, we start scurrying around because we had none of the furniture out of the rooms that the furniture had to be in. So we got a new dining room suit, and also, when we go on the road, we sleep in a king size bed. And we're on the road almost half of the year. When we come home, we're in a queen size bed. <laughs> and he's in my space. I don't want him in my space. So here's your second tip. And she tip. <laughs> it breathes on me all night so long. So here's a second tip for you. We're all about giving tips for your marriage. Here's the second tip. When you're buying bedroom furniture, measure twice at least before you go purchase that furniture and decide where that furniture is going to go. Because... <laughs> Thankfully, on the morning the furniture was being delivered, this was actually before we even knew it was being delivered that day. We were in our bedroom remeasuring again. We've already bought the furniture. Realizing that if we put a king size <laughs> bed where our queen size bed was, it wouldn't go. Fit. Jay was not going to be able to go to the bathroom <laughs> at night, which that would be a real problem. <laughs> oh my word! So we had to totally revamp our bedroom in a way that. I, at first, I didn't really want to because I thought I was going to be sleeping next to the door. And I just don't like to sleep next to the door. Some burglar can come in and get me. He's going to get me. <laughs> oh, he's going to get me. So we had this whole, oh, my word, or is this going to fit? And then when the furniture was delivered, it did fit. It was beautiful. But at the same time, it it was uh, <laughs> it was it was quite funny. We were like, how? why did we just go buy this furniture and not right. measure whether it was going to fit? Oh, that looks nice. Let's get that kind. That's what we want. <laughs> so, yeah. So there's your tips from Jay and Laura for furniture furniture buying, make sure you know the delivery day, and make sure that you have measured more than once at the store and in the place where you're going to put that. Again, we have a shout out to a listener, someone who's been to our date night, also listens to our podcast, again answering the question, the greatest challenge in our marriage is keeping up with all the day-to-day activities we face and still finding time to be a married couple. Kids and their stuff, work, ministry, friends, family, and after working through all that, involves it's hard to find time or energy to take care of our relationship and that is so so common we hear that time and time again from people we are just so busy we're just so busy and that's why we do what we do is because we want to help busy couples stay happily married for life and folks we can't we can't emphasize enough your marriage is the most important relationship next to the relationship you have with Jesus so really making that a priority your work's not a priority your ministry's not a priority your kids aren't the priority your marriage is the priority and so starting with that first making that time for date night making that time for that 15 minutes of uninterrupted conversation that you hear us beat that drum time and time again put those on your calendar first then now I can hear people right now, but Jay, but Jay and Laura, we have to work. We have to go to work. Well, that's a given. You know, you work nine to five or maybe you work weird hours like we do. You know that when you set your schedule for your marriage, setting that, that time to work on that relationship. Then the kids stuff comes second, third, fourth. Your ministry comes second, third, fourth. You know, here I'm going to work in this classroom for my kids and I'm going to be on this committee at church but you can't do everything. And and something I read not too long ago is when you say yes to something, you're saying no to something else. And we, we hear this a lot, that the, the ultimate date night, fun, engaging, we laughed a lot, but boy, was it a wake-up call for our marriage. Uh, you know, we just needed that nudge. Most marriages don't need counseling. Most marriages are not on the brink, but most marriages do need that slight adjustment that says, you know what, we've kind of gotten off kilter here, and as a result, uh, the, the date night can be a real... Uh, wake-up call for for many marriages. 
So in today's podcast, we're going to be talking mm-hmm. about woohoo, sex. Yes. We're going to be talking about pursuing each other. And here's here's the illustration that kind of comes to my mind. Now, um, before I use this illustration, I want you to hear what I'm saying, that we're talking about healthy marriages in a safe environment. Um, because the illustration that I think of is when you were in you know, elementary school and you, uh, as a girl, you're running around the run around the playground and you want to tease the boys like you know whop them upside the head or whatever so they turn around and start chasing you you know so you it's this little back and forth pursuing of each other and it starts in kindergarten on the playground it's just the way god created us now again i'm saying in a healthy relationship a healthy marriage a safe marriage um, i'm not talking about teasing each other and then you know not What's the word I'm looking for? Not teasing each other and just letting it be a tease. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so for for example, um, you know, we we've heard the statement: a man chases a woman until she catches him, and uh, that could not have been more true in our uh, relationship because uh, um, after our blind date, um, Laura found out where I was living, and she brought me a big mason jar full of green M and M's. Well, if you don't know, back in the day. Um, green M&Ms were supposed to make you horny, okay? <laughs> and since we're uh, just full disclosure, um, I thought she was wanting me to be horny. So she was giving me green M&Ms. It was to- oh, no. a joke. Yeah, it was a joke. It was a, joke. Joke. It was a, a total <laughs> joke. <laughs> but it was an example of me pursuing you. Yes. 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 <laughs> Very much. Another example of you pursuing me is the way you lied to me on our first real date after our blind date. I lied to you? Yes. You. I said, do you want to go see Ghostbusters? Have you seen it before? Oh, no. I'm not. <laughs> she had. Uh, uh, beforehand, do you want to go out for dinner? Oh, no. I don't eat much. <laughs> and then number three, after the movie, I asked her, do you want to get some ice cream? Baskin Robbins, her favorite ice cream. She said, oh, no. I really don't eat ice cream. <laughs> uh, dude, who says I don't like ice cream? I know. I can't believe a woman I trying to catch that. a man. <laughs> That's but, who says but that. pursuing each <laughs> other... <laughs> In this physical area, even not necessarily physically, but pursuing each other in your marriage, Um, doing those little things that, you know, like lighting candles. I like candles around the house. It kind of sets a nice little atmosphere. Or either that or the dinner was stinky. Yeah, but, you know, trying to light candles, that's my kind of code word for, hey, you might have a chance. Um, (laughs) But pursuing each other with those little, you know, leaving little Mm -hmm. love notes Um, around the house or you know uh, they have those um, pens now that you can get at your local Walmart or whatever that you can write on mirrors and so you could leave little Uh, love notes on a mirror Um, but those little actions of pursuing each other one way that we challenge couples to pursue each other uh, it was actually our 20th anniversary of celebrate your marriage we gave them a a challenge coin and this coin um, was to do something for your spouse just because and after one spouse does it for their spouse just because, you give them the coin, and they uh, they are supposed to do something back for you, to you just because. <laughs> and um, in our house, the uh, coin is permanently in Laura's hand. That's not true. Um, it's been a long time since we've used the coin. I, I, no, <laughs> I've used it, and then it's been a long time since you've used no, it No, I think the last time I used it, I had coconut shrimp just for you. I ordered it just yes, for you. Yes, and, and that was our daughter's sophomore you. year of college, which was two years ago. <laughs> two years ago, honey. Two. But we have had years. some great, we have had some great um, illustrations of people sharing with us on our Facebook page of how they've used that coin. Um, one I remember, our friend Sabrina mowed the lawn for her husband Mike because he'd had a busy work week, and uh, so she went out and mowed the lawn for him. Uh, Naomi and Tim they do stuff for each other all the time with their just because coin. Um, you know, buying Jay, Jay does stuff, stuff for Laura all the time <laughs> for the just because. Oh yeah, what was the last thing you did for me with just because? It was the thing I did before you had Your the silence. Coin. No, silence. No, he can't. I got you. I, anyway, we were in the VW <laughs> with the top down in Mount Pleasant. You got me ice cream. I got you not just ice cream. But Dairy Queen vanilla cone dipped in chocolate, which is your favorite. And that was before we had the shrimp. Yeah. The, the, yeah. So it's in your. It's in your. Oh no 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 no. no. <laughs> anyway, anyway, but pursuing each other. When we come back after the break, we're going to talk about why that's important to pursue each other and how that works in what we call the holy sex cycle. <laughs> 
Hi, everyone. This is Paul Thomas, Director of Live Events here at Celebrate Ministries. I want to take some time to make you aware of something special that we have going on for you. For the month of June, you can get a deep discount on one of our future Celebrate Your Marriage events. Visit our website at CelebrateYourMarriage.com, and if you use the code CELEBRATE, you will get $15 off per person. That's $30 per couple from the regular ticket price. This is going to be the lowest price we will offer to the public, and it will go away on July the 1st. Celebrate Your Marriage takes place at Historic Grand Hotel on beautiful Mackinac Island in northern Michigan, and we've got two opportunities for you to join us. On October 6th and 7th, 2019, Jay and Laura will welcome special guests Acts of Renewal, while Dr. David and Terry Sumlin of Marriage Life Ministries will speak during our special VIP experience. On May 17th and 18th, 2020, Jay and Laura will welcome comedian Jason Earls with Dustin and Bethany Reichman of Engaged Marriage as the special guests for our VIP experience. This is a great event for you and your spouse, your couples in your small group, and couples that attend your church. Take advantage of this discount. Visit CelebrateYourMarriage.com, enter the code CELEBRATE, and we will see you and your spouse on Mackinac Island. So yes, this week we are talking about sex and uh, how important it is in marriage, how important it is it's not just the act of sex, um, while that's fantastic if it's done properly, um, it is the whole idea of what sex does for you as a couple in bringing you together uh, on many, many, many different levels. And uh, in our in our home, we have code words um, or code actions. Um, you That's know. what I said in the previous, lighting candles. When I light a right. candle in the kitchen. Or when you shave your legs at oh, night. Oh, yeah, shaving my legs. <laughs> if she hasn't shaved her legs, I'm knowing that we're going to bed. Um <laughs> But if she shaves her legs, that's her kind of saying, hey, buddy. Um, but also, people don't be afraid to talk about it. I mean, there's many. We're staying in the bedroom getting ready to take showers. And he's like, are you going to shave your legs tonight? Sure, I'll shave my legs tonight. That's right. <clears throat> Again, you can't just expect for it to be spontaneous. Boom. Woo! Like we say on TV, because that's just not going to happen. So really planning for that. Then a, a, a co- Another code action is lighting candles. If yes, I light a candle is. in the kitchen, it does mean we had something stinky for dinner. Or if you put on perfume, that's another code word. Yeah. But back to the candles, if you light it in the family room. It means you got a chance, but you're going to have to work for it. But if I light it in the bedroom, it means you have We are going to get lit day. up. Yes. <laughs> you know, anyway. However so. that works in your marriage. But having those But the code word I hear the signals most signals of pursuing. The code word I hear the most is are you kidding me? Are you kidding that me? That is are not you kidding true. me? Are you kidding that me? That is not true. That is not true. <laughs> but really understanding uh, ladies that for your husband, sex is the beginning of intimacy. It is the beginning. It's why, you know, when everything's all said and done, he's like, oh, I love you. You know, you're like, duh. But but, <laughs> but it really is. It's, it's where intimacy starts for a man. And what happens when a man is intimate with, with his wife, it, it um, not only does it make him happy, but it makes him want to do things for her. For example, a um, number of years ago, uh, we were intimate on a night before Laura had to speak. <laughs> no, no, we have been but since then. We can so much. <laughs> A number of years ago. <laughs> oh, sorry, that came out wrong. Right. There was a time in our intimate life when uh, we had we had sex right before Laura um, the next morning was going to speak for a, a mothers of preschoolers event. So um, while she was gone for the mothers of preschoolers event, I was so delighted with what took place the night before that I washed the dishes, I did the laundry, I vacuumed the house, um, all things I knew that would make her happy when she came home. And I was like. Oh my goodness, that's amazing. And so for us, ladies, it's the beginning of intimacy and it makes us want to do things for you. And gentlemen, for your wife, sex is the culmination of intimacy. Meaning, you know, uh, when you do those things for your wife that are important to her, it makes her want to have sex with you. Um, When you're kind, when you're gentle, when you uh, take the time to pay attention to her and, and speak to her. With the right tone of voice, <laughs> Jay William. And we um, do call that the holy sex cycle because it is a cycle. For a man, sex is the culmination of intimacy. For the, no, 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 I mean, no. the beginning of intimacy. For a woman, it's the it's the culmination. And so it just seems like we're always on this cycle. But you can um, make that cycle work for your marriage by pursuing each other and doing those things for each other that make the other one want to be intimate right. with you. And see, that's the, uh, you know, you can look at it one or two ways. Uh, number one, oh my goodness, again, God's cruel joke. He's putting us on opposite ends of the spectrum. 
or no, God's amazing plan that we need each other. I need Laura to want to have sex with me. I need that. Laura needs me to be kind and gentle and, and loving and all that. So when we're meeting those needs, pursuing each other in that way, then um, it, it, it's really a beautiful thing. Here's a saying that will help make this um, all make sense. For a man, when all is right in the bedroom, all is right in the world. And for a woman, when all is right in the world, all is right in the bedroom. Again, feeling like we're on opposite polar end, you know, opposite ends of the spectrum, but we're not. It's just this beautiful cycle that God has created. And I can remember hearing years ago that for a man, for a woman, sex is like the crock pot. You got to plug her in first thing in the morning and you have to let her, let her simmer, simmer all, all day, day long all by saying, day. by doing those things things that are important to her, speaking kindly to her, you know, those kinds of things. For a man, sex is like a microwave. You just plug in the buttons and push go and whoop, we're ready to go. So again, keep those illustrations in the back of your mind as you're thinking about your your physical relationship in your marriage and, and, uh, and using those illustrations to help you pursue your spouse. Well, hey, we are Jay and Lauren. We are so happy that you have joined us here on our Married for Life podcast. Um, please, if you've enjoyed this, share us, rate us. Um, we're all about helping busy couples stay happily married for life.